Welcome to today's webcast series presentation, Advantages of Today's Tension Fabric Structures. My name is Bob Drake, Editor of Civil and Structural Engineer, published by Zweig Group, and I will moderate today's session. Thank you for joining this webcast, which is sponsored by Legacy Building Solutions. The views of the speakers and organizations participating in this webcast are their own and do not necessarily reflect those of Civil and Structural Engineer or its publisher, Zweig Group. If you have any technical difficulties while viewing this webcast, please submit questions or a brief explanation of your technical problem using the Ask a Question box at the left side of the webcast dashboard, and a representative will assist you. Note the button in the upper right corner to enlarge the slide viewing window if desired. During the webcast, you also can submit questions to our speakers using the same Ask, Ask a Question box. Submit your questions at any time, and we will try to answer as many as we can later in the webcast. Zweig Group encourages group learning for our events. If you are viewing the live webcast with a group on one registered person's computer, that person must complete and submit the multiple viewer registration form for the group in order for everyone to earn credit. Download the multiple viewer registration form from the event resources on the left side of the webcast dashboard. The mission instructions are on the form. Also, note a link in the event resources section to download a PDF of the slides in today's webcast. Additionally, at the end of today's event, we'll provide a webcast evaluation survey for you to, to submit your feedback. The learning objectives for the event are shown for your review. Details on downloading a certificate of completion will be provided later in the webcast. Viewers of archived webcasts must pass a quiz in order to download a certificate of completion. Today's presenters are Mark Van Scoy, Structural Sales Manager with Legacy Building Solutions, Jeff Williams, Vice President of Sales at Legacy, and Ben Fox, President and CEO of Legacy Building Solutions. So starting off today's webcast is Jeff Williams. Jeff? <coughs> Thanks, Bob. The earliest fabric structures were tents used by nomadic societies. These first buildings were simple, portable dwellings consisting of simple materials or skins draped over sticks. Today's fabric structures use the same principles of a flexible fabric membrane and a sturdy steel frame, but that is where the comparison ends. Modern fabric structures are engineered buildings designed to meet the rigor rigorous demands of daily use and environmental factors. However, there are a wide range of quality standards, engineering principles, and materials used in the fabric structure industry. These materials and techniques <coughs> have made fabric structure designs considerations similar, if not identical, to traditional buildings. However, fabric structures have their own unique advantages, including expedited construction and portability. As this technology evolves, there are ever more design options available to engineers, architects, and building owners. The design flexibility opens up a whole new range of uses for fabric structures. Today, their applications range from simple storage sheds to emergency shelters and large-scale music and sports stadiums. Although there are many variations within these categories, there are two main types of fabric structures, tensile structures and tension fabric structures. The difference relates to the type of frame and how the fabric is attached. In a tensile structure, the fabric acts like a sail and it is attached to a secure mast or pole at the center of the building. Tensile buildings such as Munich Olympic Stadium and Denver Airport typically have a curved or peaked shape. This webinar will focus on tension fabric structures. Tension fabric structures rely on the force of tension that is transmitted through each end of the connecting members, such as a cable, wire, or tube when it is pulled tight. Fabric in tension is used to create a smooth, flat surface such as a roof or wall. This design is ideal for shedding water, snow, or debris that may accumulate. Tension fabric buildings have a traditional building shape. The design of the tension building is limited only by the strength of the building frame. Either type of fabric structure will have several advantages over traditional buildings, including steel, wood, or brick structures. Fabric is the only building material that transmits natural light allowing the building operator to reduce the amount of artificial lighting and energy 
required to use the building. This saves on electric and maintenance costs. The flexible fabric membrane is extremely weather and airtight. The fabric is attached without penetrations and closely seals all apertures created for ancillary systems. Soft fabric cladding also works to dull sound, creating a calm environment inside the building. Rather than reverberations or banging sound all around the building, occupants will be able to focus on the task at hand, including sports practice or events. Many building materials, particularly steel, are prone to corrosion. Fabric is non-corrosive material, particularly well suited for storing salt and fertilizer or for harsh environments. If a building is to be relocated during its lifespan, fabric cladding is easily detached from the frame and rolled up for cost-effective shipping to the new site. And at the end of the building's lifespan, most fabric membranes are recyclable. Fabric cladding is installed up to three times faster than comparable steel sheeting. Most fabric buildings require 0.02 to 0.03 man hours per square foot to be installed compared to steel sheeting, which requires 0.04 to 0.07 man hours per square foot. Well, this allows the building owner to realize a faster ROI due to decreased construction time and associated costs. The maintenance costs of fabric structures are lower than comparable steel buildings. If the sturdy fabric is damaged due to collision or extreme environmental conditions, it costs as little as $2 per square foot to replace the fabric. In contrast, replacing steel sheeting can cost up to $7 per square foot. It's also important to note here that fabric structures are no more vulnerable to damage than other buildings. It takes an excessive amount of pressure or force to damage a fabric membrane. As you will see later in the webinar, the structural fabric is rigorously tested to meet high quality and longevity standards. Structural fabric is woven from continuous filament polyester yarns. The woven layer of the fabric is called the scrim. The fabric is then chemically bonded with an adhesive coating compound. Finished fabric has limited combustibility and will remain, excuse me, and will maintain a brand new appearance for years. Architectural fabrics are subject to several quality tests. These tests measure the strength of the fabric by determining the force or load which causes the fabric to break and how long it stretches or elongates before breaking. In addition to strength, fabric is measured for flame and UV resistance. Uniaxle and biaxle elongation, coating adhesion, and weldability and seam strength. Architectural fabrics available today are far superior to those used in the industry 20 years ago, and more innovation continues to take place every day, with enhancements contributing to greater longevity and less maintenance while still providing ample translucency to allow users to take advantage of natural sunlight. PE fabric, polyethylene fabric, is lighter and more translucent than PVC. It also comes with a lower upfront cost and somewhat shorter lifespan, around 20 years. PE fabric self-cleans very well and is also available in flame retardant formulations. PVC fabric has a higher tear strength than PE fabric and is designed to last longer, often up to 30 years. All PVC fabric is flame retardant. The disadvantages of PVC fabric are that it has a relatively higher initial cost and is generally less translucent. Before converting fabric in the manufacturing plant, each roll is inspected for imperfections and color matching and tested to ensure compliance with material specifications such as tear strength and elasticity. At the beginning of each shift, all machinery is inspected to ensure it is in proper working order. Once those steps are completed, in-house fabric panel manufacturing begins. First, each fabric panel is carefully cut from the roll. The cutting floor is marked at regular intervals to verify the accuracy of the cuts. Then the cut panels are permanently welded using a hot air or wedge weld to form a wall or roof panel, typically 20 feet wide. Seams can be produced at a rate of 20 feet per minute 
so the fabric panel manufacturing is a very efficient process. After panels are completed, they are rolled up and wrapped in waste fabric for shipping. Legacy keeps records of each bolt of fabric and each panel for quality control. And of course, in all fabric structures, the fabric is supported by some type of metal frame. The frame system dictates the design options available for the finished structure. Depending on the frame style and manufacturing capabilities, fabric structures may be suitable for applications ranging from simple garden sheds to world-class sports and entertainment venues. Simplest frame style is a single tube arch. The frame itself consists of single metal tubes bent in half circle shape and typically spaced every four to six feet. Single tube arch buildings are very easy to assemble and relocate. Single tube arch buildings can be purchased inexpensively at a big box store and usually don't require a permanent foundation. These buildings are not engineered to support loads and are best used for temporary or small scale applications such as a garden shed or carport. Aluminum extruded frames are more substantial than single tube arches. They create good looking and portable structures. However, extruded frame buildings can also be used as more permanent structures. The buildings are designed for rapid installation with a clean and neat interior look. Because of their neat appearance, a high life cycle, a high life cycle cost, they are most popular as rental shelters and on construction sites, temporarily store materials and equipment. Established frame sizes that can be reused are more economical than custom aluminum extruded frames. Aluminum is limited in terms of its ability to handle wide spans and environmental loads, which limits the potential uses of the building as more permanent structures. For many years, open web hollow tube trusses compromising tubular steel cords with tubular steel or steel angles placed intermittently between the cords to act as web members were the industry standard for fabric structure framing. Open web truss design still works as a basic option for standard size smaller spans. However, there is debate in engineering communities about cord plastification issues in hollow tube trusses. Many of these concerns have not been adequately addressed by open web truss suppliers. Open web trusses are also difficult to customize due to the setting of uniform panel points along a truss cord. Hanging loads must be located at these points to reduce any additional bending that will be introduced into the cords. Loads that cannot be located at panel points will require additional analysis for this non-typical situation for truss loading. These type of loads will require additional time in engineering and drafting. Hollow tubes also pose a serious durability issue in applications where buildings are exposed to corrosive conditions. Corrosion can originate inside the tubes, out of sight and undetected, and corrode the frames from the inside out. Once corrosion begins, it can worsen quickly and often the damage is irreparable. Open web truss buildings remain a popular option, especially for smaller spans and standard building shapes because of their lower initial cost. The newest type of frame available for fabric structures is the rigid steel frame. Although rigid steel frames were first introduced to the industry in 2010, they use the same proven engineering principles and practices that have been employed in traditional construction for decades. The solid steel frames enable design options not previously available on fabric structures, including clear span design over 300 feet wide and custom engineering to allow the structure to support loads from environmental factors such as wind and snow, as well as collateral materials, including cranes, mezzanines, multiple do and multiple doors. Like all rigid frame buildings, these fabric structures are designed with combination of FEA software and manual quality checks. The sophisticated software system also allows the building designer and engineer to customize the building, make changes, provide accurate estimates, and explore the feasibility of creative solutions to customer requests. While the engineering for other frame types is somewhat subjective, there is no question about the integrity of a rigid frame building.
Fabric structures on rigid steel frame have a, have a number of advantages over the other styles of fabric structures. Primarily, they use the same engineering practices that have been proven for decades across all types of construction. In contrast, there is a debate in engineering communities about cord plastification issues in hollow tube trusses. Many of these concerns have not been adequately addressed by open web truss suppliers. Open web trusses are also difficult to customize due to the setting of uniform panel points along a truss cord. Hanging loads must be located at these points to reduce any additional bending that will be introduced into the cords. Loads that cannot be located at a panel point will require additional analysis for this non-typical situation for truss loading. These type of loads will require additional time in engineering and drafting. Hollow tubes also pose a serious durability issue in applications where buildings are exposed to corrosive conditions. Corrosion can originate inside the tube, out of sight, and undetected, and can corrode the frames from the inside out. Once corrosion begins, it can worsen quickly and often the damage is irreparable. Fabric structures on a rigid steel frame adhere to project, excuse me, adhere to project specifications and local building codes, including wind, snow, and seismic loads for the applicable area. Any type of fabric structure should be designed to withstand normal and extreme conditions in the applicable area as proven with engineering software. Another advantage of rigid steel frame is that the frame can be designed to meet deflection limits. Building codes typically dictate the amount of deflection or sag slash sway that is allowed when the fabric is subject to the loads, like wind or snow. It is common for building engineers to demand tighter deflection limits, which can easily be achieved in the design process by employing a heavier steel frame. Secondary framing members are another way rigid frame fabric structures are designed for extra strength and longevity. Purlins and struts may be directly bolted to the frame, eliminating the use of complicated brackets that can ultimately weaken the structure. Many fabric structure installers disconnect the secondary frame when attaching the fabric to the building frame. This reduces the safety of the building during installation, especially if a wind event occurs when the secondary members are unattached. With Legacy's patented installation system, secondary framing members are never disconnected during the construction. It is important to understand that secondary framing members are almost always in compression, so attaching the roof fabric to framing members or purlins is simply a bad design. During a wind event, purlins will experience greater compression force due to the wind loads. If a fabric panel is attached, it will apply additional loads that pull the purlin out of plane, which drastically reduces the capacity and strength of the framing member. The steel frame must also be protected from the elements and from corrosive materials that may be stored inside the building, such as fertilizer or salt. Several coating options are available depending on your needs and budget. Matt will talk about some of the options. Thanks, Jeff. In non-corrosive environments, primer paint is an inexpensive way to treat steel. White or red primer are available. Powder coating the steel is another option to treat the steel for low corrosive environments. Powder coating the frame also provides unlimited color options. Inline or pre-galvanized steel consists of coating of zinc and chromate with a clear polymer top coat also known as gator shield. Inline galvanized tubes are treated before the trusses are welded. During the welding process, the gator shield coating is burned off the inside and outside of the tubes. This leaves the welded areas, the most important areas to protect, extremely vulnerable to corrosion. The best protection against corrosion, hot dip galvanizing, consists of a layer of zinc three mils thick, chemically bonded to the steel through a metallur metallurgical reaction. The hot dip galvanizing process applies at least 3.9 mils of zinc to the entire surface area of the steel per ASTM A123 standards. Hot dip galvanized steel frames are the best option for corrosive environments. 
The attachment of the fabric to the frame is another critical building component. The integrity of the building is only as strong as the system connecting the fabric and frame. Legacy Building Solutions uses a patented method to attach the fabric to the frame. This method was created in 2010 in order to correct some of the common problems with previous generations of fabric structures. Rather than complicated connections and tech screws, which can corrode and fail, Legacy bolts extrusions directly to the steel frame with a half-inch diameter bolt. This is a simple, direct way to connect the fa fabric to the frame. Because the Keter rail moves horizontally, there is no need to detach the secondary members. The Keter system results in a quicker and safer installation and extends the structure's lifespan. A primary advantage of the rigid steel frame system is that each roof panel, typically 20 feet wide, is attached directly to the frame. This is in contrast to the mono covers often used on truss buildings where the fabric is attached only to the end frames putting excess stress on the end frames. When wind blows over the peak of a building on the leeward side, it comes into suction and lifts the fabric off the structure to the point where the fabric is literally no longer touching any of the interior trusses. Fabric is not designed to handle those forces without support, and in these situations, roof fabric can tear away from the building. Calculations have shown that mono-covered design typically experiences triple the amount of stress that it should per fabric supplier recommendations. Foundation construction must be completed before the actual building can be installed. The lightweight nature of fabric structures typically means there are a variety of foundation options to meet the needs of the customer, soil conditions, and building use. Cast in place foundations, precast concrete, helicals, earth anchors, and micropiles have all been successfully used as fabric structure foundations. Some manufacturers will even claim that their buildings can be installed with no foundations. Be wary of these claims. If the building will be used for more than a few weeks, they are a permanent building and need to be supported as such. The proven engineering and strength of the rigid steel frame allows the customization options comparable to two or better than traditional buildings. Because the roof and sidewalls are treated as separate panels, it's possible to create overhangs of any length. The roof, sidewall, and soffit are three separate panels and installed at different points in the process. The fabric for each component is individually tensioned and kept flat to avoid pulling or warping the scrim of the fabric. Overhangs have many uses, including protecting a dry area next to the building or creating a unique look. But overhangs can also serve their own use as well. They are often used as the intake for a passive ventilation system. They can also be used for adding icebreakers, gutters, and or overhangs to, create, increase, to increase the functionality of the building. Another way to create the area around a building is by adding a canopy or awning above a door. This provides a dry area to enter and exit the building. Adding a lean-to is a cost-effective way to add more space to a structure. Lean-tos may be opened or enclosed and may be separated from the building interior or completely open. Specifying a lean-to gives clients more room for circulation paths, storage, office, or retail space, among other uses. Mezzanines or raised platforms increase the square footage of a building without requiring a large, larger building footprint. Mezzanines are effective solutions for storage space, VIP areas, or viewing platforms. For a variety of practical and aesthetic reasons, some customers may specify a different wall cladding on a fabric structure. Options include steel, concrete, glazing walls, FRPs, and stone. It's also possible to attach a fabric structure to a new or existing building even if the other building is constructed of traditional materials. The buildings are sealed together with simple flashing. If the fabric structure will be shorter, the frame will be strengthened to accommodate snow falling off the other structure. For occupied buildings like sports or entertainment centers, a variety of climate control options are available to control the temperature, humidity, and light available inside the building. Mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems are also available. 
Water management systems, including gutters and downspouts, can be added to the overhangs to further direct the flow of moisture. Insulated buildings lose the natural light that originally made fabric structures so popular. On a sunny day, a fabric building is bright enough to work without additional electric lighting. On overcast days or at night, the interior fabric reflects the light, minimizing the artificial lighting needed. You'll save money on lighting costs, as well as time lost due to maintenance. Adding a skylight is one way to introduce light back into the building. Fabric skylights are available in any width and are seamlessly added to the building to prevent leaks. When fabric structures are used as sports and entertainment venues, it's important that they include the same top-notch acoustics and stage lighting. Point loads for equipment and even the stage itself may be added to the steel frame. For industrial storage applications in harsh environments, there are ways to enhance the non-corrosive properties of fabric. The most effective is adding a fabric liner to the inside of the building to completely seal the frame away from any corrosive material. A line building also has, the, has access panels to allow the building owner to inspect the frame and a cavity ventilation system to prevent moisture from accumulating in the sealed area around the frame. When applicable, the steel frame is engineered to support collateral loads from cranes, conveyors, catwalks, industrial doors, and fire suppression systems. The dead and live load from these systems are accounted for in addition to necessary environmental loads. For extra flexibility, fabric structures may be designed with open end walls or side walls, or completely open pavilions. After the materials for the structure are chosen, it's time to start on a design. We will be using a case study of a design build project as a way to demonstrate the options and design flexibility of fabric structures. In this instance, the client required a way to store separated bulk fertilizers for several customers. The specifications also encompass space for operations and loading. Knowing how similar large scale bulk storage buildings have best used their space, the project design representative proposed a structure that used several lean tos for operations as well as an offset peak designed to handle a conveyor. The customer provided information about the capacity of the structure, including the type of products to be stored and the tonnage of each. Legacy partnered with the customer to model the piles and design a building around that model. Once the pile models were created, the team drew a building depicting the stored material and the containment structure. The customer could clearly see how space would be allocated and how the lean-tos create a circulation path with room for maintenance and operations. If you look closely, you can also see that the secondary bracing, doors, and portals are shown on the drawings. With this drawing agreed upon by all parties, the next phases of pricing, permitting, and planning were able to begin. After a manufacturer is chosen and design is completed, installation begins. Like all permanent construction, fabric structures on a rigid steel frame are best installed by experienced professionals. Before construction begins, ensure that safety is the highest priority for the crew on site and for the home office. At a minimum, workers should be trained in OSHA guidelines, follow strict safety protocols set by the company and any other applicable entities, and they should also wear personal protective equipment at all times. And here's the completed building legacy design in partnership with the building owner. The fertilizer storage building for IEI barge services measures 77 feet wide by 580 feet long with an offset peak and three lean-tos. The lean-tos provide a drive-through area and room for operations without com compromising the clear area available for storage. Ventilation is via a mesh soffit under the overhangs for intake and roof vents for exhaust. The conveyor load is designed for a fully loaded weight of 350 pounds per lineal foot. The building is optimized to receive product via rail, truck, and barge. Inside the building are six concrete storage bins with bin lift gates. Each storage bin is a different size to accommodate the product, and the bins can be reconfigured as needed. The rigid steel frames are hot dip galvanized to prevent corrosion, 
even when storing fertilizers and chemicals. The energy efficient fabric cladding provides enough light for daytime work and there are lights installed for overcast days or nighttime work. This building is located in, in an area where snow is a factor, so the exterior has gutters, downspouts, and icebreakers for safety and moisture control. The total building system is about 60,000 square feet, with just under 45,000 of that available for storage. Legacy crews installed the entire building with subcontractors pouring the concrete foundation. It is equally important to ensure that the final building also meets your standards. With all the variables among fabric structure manufacturers, there are some objective quality certifications that ensure your manufacturer is meeting the highest standards. These certifications include ISO 9001-2008, CSA A660-10 from the Quality Systems Assessment Registrar, CWB or Canadian Welding Bureau, and a Workplace Safety Certification of Recognition or SE Core. And of course, the main question your clients will have is about cost. Because each building is customized, there's no way to provide a blanket cost estimate. However, there are a few factors that will help determine the feasibility of a fabric structure on a rigid steel frame. Projects that require smaller spans don't benefit as much because the cost of technology is high, and lead times can be longer than with comparable aluminum structures. However, the added design flexibility makes rigid frame structures a more comparable option for buildings requiring a high level of customization or specialty features. To demonstrate the versatility of these structures, here are some examples of completed projects. This concert and event center for River Cree Resort and Casino in Alberta is connected to an existing structure via a sealed corridor. The interior features a white liner with a black fabric liner behind the stage. Legacy acted as a construction manager for this project, completing the construction of the building and overseeing the subcontractors employed for finishing work. The second floor VIP area, stage, LED lighting system, and lean-to all added loads to the building, which was constructed to replace an under-engineered under fabric structure. This building has been commended as especially airtight due to the flexible fabric seal around apertures. The sound deadening properties of the fabric also enhance the building's acoustics. This is an assembly for a solar ship, a new type of aircraft that runs completely on solar power. Legacy worked with solar ship to design this building to their specifications and using an, using an existing concrete pad for the foundation. The accordion doors and 60 foot eave clearance allow easy access and maneuvering in and around the structure for aircraft assembly. Rooftop solar panels allow for completely off-grid operation. The fabric is also flame retardant to comply with NFPA 409. The structure has been awarded the Game Changer Project of the Year by Canadian Solar Industries Association, CAN-SIA, with the award for Solar PV Project. CAN-SIA recognizes the hangar for using a reliable and cost-effective system that enhances the feature of building integrated distribution generation. This is a salt mine in Kansas. Fabric was the only option for them because salt is very corrosive and would quickly destroy steel panels. After working with the building owner to add advanced corrosion fighting features, including a liner, ventilation system, access panels, and purling caps, Legacy was able to offer an enhanced warranty on this building. This, this building is also connected to an existing fabric structure. This fertilizer storage building for IEI barge services is a great example of a design assist project. The building owner needed a way to store six types of fertilizer. Complicating the project was the fact that the building is located in a poor soil area along the banks of the Mississippi River. Legacy's team first created computer-generated models of the six products and then designed the building to fit around the piles. The lean-tos provide a drive path with access to all six bins for transloading. The structure receives and loads product via rail, truck, and barge, which is accommodated with the conveyor and overhead doors. One of the largest indoor tennis centers in the country, the Oklahoma City Tennis Center at Will Rogers Park, has six indoor courts. Everything was designed to meet USTA standards 
and the white liner reflects the LED lighting to magnify the lighting available on each court. This building is designed for occupancy and it has a quite quiet climate control system for year-round tennis events and tournaments. And this is Legacy's campus, located in South Haven, Minnesota. We have four buildings for offices, steel fabrication, fabric manufacturing, and truck loading. All buildings are fully insulated and contain heating and cooling systems, and each building is customized for the building's use. The office is two stories and is connected to the fabric manufacturing plant. The fabric plant has deep shelves attached to the rigid frame that can hold up to 300,000 tons of fabric at eave height. The truck shop has multiple overhead doors and an overhead crane and extended eaves for dry loading. The steel fabrication plant has five overhead cranes to move the steel components from one area to another. In closing, here are some of the benefits of fabric structures listed by each member of the project team. With the modern technology and building methods used by today's fabric structure manufacturers, there are a number of reasons to specify fabric structures for building construction projects. And now I'll turn it back over to Bob and our president, Ben Fox, for the question and answer portion. Thanks, Matt. So for the next few moments, uh, Ben, Jeff, and Matt will respond to some of the questions that were submitted during the presentation. You can continue to submit questions using the Ask a Question box on the left side of the webcast dashboard. So to get started, our first question, are fabric structures suitable for earthquake-prone areas, such as San Francisco? Hello, everyone, and thanks for attending our webinar today. Yes, uh, fabric structures are very suitable for earth earthquake-prone areas. And uh, in fact, our, our software does account for the seismic classification for that area in, in creating our design, and there are often times where the, where the uh, seismic loads will control the design. So what is the standard width between frames? Are there any options for different widths? Our standard width is 20 feet just because it is the most uh, economical width. But for example, if customers want a 22-foot door in the sidewall of the structures, we have several ways to approach that. We could do it with you know, extending our bay width to say 23 or 24 feet, or we could also offer like a jack beam over, over that area. So there's, I mean, even though 20 foot is our standard, we can definitely customize the bay width. What about fabric puncture during wind events? Metal will be dented, uh, will the fabric rip? Fabric is extremely tough. It's, it's far tougher than most people realize. Um, you know, in terms of tearing, it, it would take a, a very sharp object at a very high rate of speed in order to tear through it. Um, you know, it, it can be cut with a very sharp knife, but for example, a two by four flying into fabric at 50, 60 miles an hour most likely will not penetrate the fabric. Um, so what happens to the fabric in minus 40 degrees C weather? Fabric, as it gets colder, does want to shrink, and that will apply forces onto the frames. So, for example, at minus 40 degrees, it would be very common for a 20-foot wide panel to shrink up to 3 to 4 inches. So um, our, you know, the fabric, the, the frames that are supporting the fabric definitely has to be able to account for those forces. The forces of the shrinkage are typically identical to what the forces are in the, in the original tension of the fabric, but it's definitely something to consider when designing in, in, um, in very cold climates. So how long is uh, your nominal custom design period? Typically, we're, design period is typically between one and three weeks, depending on the, on the complexity of the, of the project. Um, you know, a simple building, oftentimes we can, we can design out in just days, but when we have a very highly customized project with jack beams, overhead cranes, you know, multiple lean-tos, and maybe other building connections, at that point it can take up to two to three weeks to design. Does the fabric add any rigidity to the structure um, that is counted on, on in the design? 
fabric by nature may be adding some rigidity, but it is absolutely not accounted for in the design. Our engineering completely ignores the fact that fabric adds any strength to the structure. Um, that, therefore, that if, for example, a, um, a weather event or something happened where a panel is missing or is or is damaged um, by a loader or whatnot, that so the structure is still completely structurally sound, whether it has fabric on it or not, or even just part of the fabric on it. <clears throat> Does Legacy's attachment system require more installation time than a mono cover attachment? Our our patented connection system will take a little bit more time. There's no doubt about that. Um, honestly, that that would depend on the wind as well. If it's a if it's a 20, 30 mile an hour wind day. We can certainly continue to install fabric panels with our system versus a mono cover. It has to be less than, typically less than five miles an hour to install the mono cover. But if, if weather is very nice, you know, less than five miles an hour, there's no doubt a mono cover would be slightly faster. If the uh, fabric gets punctured, are there patching methods or do entire sections need to be replaced? If it's a minor tear, say anything less than probably five feet long, it is it is pretty easy to repair on site. Um, we've even repaired much larger damaged panels on site um, with our with our trained crews. Um, one thing that is unique about the legacy system, though, is that, for example, the roof panels are completely independent of the sidewall panels, and the sidewall panels are independent of the end wall panels. So, for example, if a loader drives through a sidewall um, or, you know, hits the doorway, we can simply replace a sidewall panel rather than replacing the entire roof section as well. So it just allows for a lot more flexibility and cost effectiveness if there is damage. So are these structures suitable for sporting activities that impact the shell with the various balls that are used? Absolutely. In fact, that seems to be one of our fastest growing markets right now is, is buildings used for sports and recreation. Um, the, the main advantages are just the, the general interior appearance and air tightness of the structure. So we save the customers save a lot of money in terms of heating and cooling utilities. Uh, the sound quality is excellent, and the fabric certainly does not have any issue with balls, pucks, um, from hitting them, um, it, it'll probably bounce back a little faster than it came came at them, but um, it, it certainly is no problem. So can they be designed for hurricane wind loads, and are they certified for Texas windstorm load conditions and hail resistance? We can we can cert certainly design for very high wind loads. Um, that has not, not been a challenge, and we, uh, even in, in designing for those wind loads, we do have to take into account the, the strength or the strip tensile strength of the fabric. So for extremely high wind loads, we may choose a stronger PVC fabric versus a lighter weight PVC or PE fabric. Um, I'm not familiar with a Texas certification. Uh, I know there's Florida certifications for um, hurricanes and wind loads. Hail has, no, has not been a problem. I can think of one or two buildings maybe in thousands that we've installed over the years that have actually had hail damage that needed to be repaired, so that, that, which is a good testament to, to just how tough the fabric is. So what is FRP? This acronym was mentioned about 28 minutes into the presentation. Um, FRP, oh, FRP, I think that is a fiberglass reinforced panel um, that was used on the sidewalls of a project that we did in Anafagasta, Chile. Um, that was what's specified by the customer, and that, that, they, that was the cladding of their choice for the sidewalls. Okay. Um, will restretching of fabric be requi re required throughout its service life? Our experience is 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 that if we tension the fabric, if our professional in-house installation crews tension the fabric, that it is never required to retension the fabric. We have experience installing, I believe it's over 40 million square feet of fabric buildings now, and which is over 4,000 buildings. So we have quite a bit of experience, 
And um, again, if our crews install the fabric, it will not need to be retentioned. So what is the minimum roof pitch to prevent rainwater accumulation? The bare minimum would probably be about a 1 in 12. Um, typically in higher snow load areas, it is, it is common to use higher roof pitches like a minimum of 312. But strictly for water, a 1 in 12 would be, a, would be the bare minimum. Are separate panels provided for the windward roof and leeward roof, or is the roof a, a single panel? The roof is typically a single panel that will go from the overhang, the tip of the overhang, up and over the peak all the way to the other overhang. Um, but they are individual panels per bay. So for example, if the frames are 20 foot on center and it's a 100 foot wide building, that roof panel may measure 20 feet wide by, let's say, 120 feet long to go up and over the pitch. Um, but no, it, it is a con one continuous panel per bay. Can the fabric have insulating layers added to increase the R value? Yes. Uh, typically, the way fabric buildings are insulated is you have your exterior fabric, which is on the outside, uh, basically uh, attached to the outside flange. And then your insulation is typically laid on the bottom flange, which is resting on a series of purlins and cables to support and connect the insulation. And then the most then the next um, step is to line it with another with a fabric liner that goes underneath the bottom flange, which gives you a very airtight connection. It will literally seal the building from the inside out, and then we just ventilate the cavity using typically uh, mesh at the overhangs and roof vents up at the peak. The system has proven to be very efficient, um, and customers have been very happy with it. What is the heaviest roof snow load you've ever designed for? I know we did a project in Chile, um, up in the mountains of Chile. I believe it was 256 pounds snow load, if I remember correctly. So, um, that, which is pretty extreme, um, and we can certainly go even heavier if required. What is the maximum width and length of fabric? that can be fabricated as a single piece? Well, that's a good question. I mean, what we can what we can manufacture is probably a lot larger than we're willing to design for. For example, even if we have a 300 foot wide building, our fabric panels at the largest would only be about 350 feet by 20 feet, which would be going, again, going up and over the roof. So even though we could we could certainly design and manufacture larger than that, it, it would be our choice not to, um, just because we want to make sure we have a, a great connection to the frame for strength and interchangeability. Okay. Um, can Legacy design a foundation? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we have engineers on staff that can that can design foundations. We probably design the foundation for about 50% of our customers. Um, and we have a you know a lot of different methods that we can that we can use uh, per the slides. There you know there's micro piles, helicals, concrete, different concrete um, you know piers or walls. So we can be very flexible in design. Um, it was indicated that the fabric material can be designed to resist corrosion by materials stored within the structure, uh, which would normally impact an aluminum skin. How are similar structural materials protected against corrosion, such as the bents and purlins? I think what we're referring to there is our liner system. And again, our liner is secured to the bottom flange, and it basically creates a whole other envelope on the inside of the structure. Um, the seams are, for example, hand welded, so it literally is sealed from the inside out. Um, we've had engineers and, and um, mechanical engineers who have tested our structures and are very impressed with the air tightness of our structure using a liner, so for, which is a good testament to how we protect the steel frames, the steel purlins, cables, rods, etc., from corrosion. So for very, storing very corrosive materials, a fabric structure is a very, very good choice, and a legacy fabric structure is 
in my opinion, the best choice because of our advanced aligner system. Um, is the product fire rated? Uh, is it UL listed? The, the, the fabric that we offer are typically fire rated. I mean, there are PE fabrics available that are non-FR, although that is becoming less and less um, popular. Um, but the majority of the PE or polyethylene fabric that we offer is fire rated, and all PVC fabrics are definitely uh, fire rated. Um, just a few more questions for today. Uh, can logos be printed on the outside of the building? It is possible to print logos. What we would typically do is, um, if, if we're printing a logo, it would definitely want to be on a PVC fabric as it prints far better than polyethylene. So, for example, if a customer wanted a logo, we can print that onto a PVC fabric and we, we can attach it in several ways. Uh, one way is to weld that PVC panel onto the, onto the, you know, the, let's say the sidewall panel. And um, so there would actually be two layers of PVC at that location. Um, another, air, another way to do it is to just use a Keter system, which is basically an a aluminum Keter rail, which can allow interchangeability of the, of the banner or the logo. That way, if the, you know, if the printing fades in 10 years, you can, you can exchange it and put in a new panel. So how is the fabric building's exterior sound uh, noise isolation? Well, fabric by nature is, does very good with sound reverberation. Um, we have not done any specific testing to that, but we have customers, for example, the River Cree Event Center that we did up in, um, in Alberta, they, the customer was very pleased how quiet it is outside the structure versus their previous building. So um, all, we, all we can rely, rely on there is the information we've gotten back from our customers, which has been very positive. Um, could a legacy frame be recovered at the end of the lifespan, assuming the frames are still acceptable, and is this cost effective? Absolutely. That's a good point. Um, we can design structures for, you know, for fabric with the option to clad them with metal at any time in the future. Um, typically, it's good to know that up front in the design phase because the um, the dead load of a steel building, our steel framing members, is slightly higher than fabric cladding and, and its supporting members. So if we know that up front, we can certainly design a building where we install it as a fabric structure. And in mining, this is very common. You know, they'll install it as a fabric structure. It can, may get moved several times because um, our buildings are relocatable. And then I may be in the final location if it's 20 years down the line and the fabric or, you know, is starting to, is starting to show some wear, they can reclad the building with all metal. Um, so what is the typical lifespan of the fabric? That will vary by the fabric type chosen. Um, our, our basic, our lowest quality fabrics are typically last around 20 years, where our higher quality fabrics, especially in the thicker PVCs, certainly have experience um, lasting 30 years plus. And uh, what kind of heating systems do you use in your fabric athletic facilities? There's a, a wide variety. A mo the majority of them are forced air so that they can heat and cool. Um, we've definitely had experience with, um, with um, radiation systems, or radiant systems, I'm sorry. Um, and, of course, you can heat through the floor as well on, on smaller structures. That can be common, but definitely the most common is, is the uh, forced air systems. Uh, well, thanks, Ben. That's all the time we're going to take for questions today. Um, as we finish up, you can download your certificate of completion from the event resources section on the left side of the screen or use the URL on the slide showing now. After downloading the certificate, enter your name in it and print and save a copy of the PDF. The certificate will be available through the end of today only. A hard copy will not be mailed or emailed to you. If you missed our note at the beginning and you are watching the live webcast with a group on one person's computer, please download the multiple viewer registration form and complete and submit the form to receive credit. We need this information in case you are audited and we are contacted to verify this continuing education activity.
Additionally, this webcast is being recorded and will be archived on cenews.com slash continuing education. For viewers of archived webcasts, click on the quiz button at the bottom of your screen to take a quiz on the presentation. Archived viewers must pass a quiz in order to download a certificate of completion. Questions that have been submitted today but we do not have time to answer will be available online within a few days at cenews.com slash continuing education. So please check there for further discussion about today's topic. As we conclude, you should see a webcast evaluation survey. We appreciate your feedback, which helps Dwight Group and sponsors such as Legacy Building Solutions plan future webcasts. So thank you to Ben Fox, Jeff Williams, and Matt Vanskoy, and to everyone who joined us. This ends today's webcast.